Hey, this is Kenneth, and today let's talk about USB-C power delivery, and specifically these USB-C power delivery trigger boards, which are often labeled ZY12PDN. USB-C power delivery is pretty neat because it means that you know every USB connector is the same, USB-C, right? Which means that your cables in the uh, mythical world where this actually worked out, worked out well are all just symmetric end-to-end. -end. Um, there's a lot of realities and details where that USB-C didn't work out to be as simple as we hoped, but the main thing I want to talk about is power delivery, where the, instead of being limited to only 5 volts, USB-C actually lets you negotiate either 5, 9, 12, 15, or 20 volts and up to 5 amps, and so USB-C made it possible to now charge laptops off of USB-C, which means that you can now have whole laptops that have nothing but USB-C connectors on them. But it also means that you have other, you know, every USB-C device then has some subset of power delivery options. So this it turns is a relatively good USB battery pack that you, lists on it USB-C output 5, 9, 15, 20 volts. And so, not only does this mean that it can charge your devices faster, um, but there's other possibilities. And so, these little PCBs that you can find on eBay and Amazon are USB-C power delivery trigger boards, which mean that they negotiate, they speak that USB-C power delivery protocol to negotiate what voltage you want. So let's first look at this PCB and then I'll talk about how to get it to interact with these other devices. So here's the ZY12PDN board underneath my microscope. And you'll notice it has the, the label there. And then on the back it has a label that says YZX Studio, which I haven't been able to find any information on their website as far as I'm designing it, but it seems to be the sort of device they build, so that's credible. So moving from left to right here, we have a USB-C connector that's your power input for it. Here is an STM32 microcontroller. So this has their firmware on it that speaks the USB-C power delivery protocol. Um, its user interface it has a red, green, blue LED here and then a single push button. And then on the output, you have the option of, you can either buy these bare, like I did here, and it has a footprint for a standard 0.2 inch screw terminal. And it also has a footprint for, these nine pads here are a footprint for a USB-A connector. I don't really understand why you would want to put a USB-A connector on this, but you know, so be it, There, that's an option. But the main thing is you can get this with, you know, standard, five millimeter screw terminals here, or bare like this, like I did, so I can just solder whatever wires I want onto it. All right, and if you look at the bottom of it, um, the positive trace goes along there, and then the negative trace is the rest of it. So I mean, it's conceivable that this thing can handle five amps, which is, you know, the upper limit for USB-C, and then it's just, you know, you're gonna lose some power. But the main thing is that's, that's the PCB, and so this push button, is how you select the different voltages that you want to negotiate and then it'll show you what voltage mode it's in by the different colors there. So let's plug this into a USB-C battery pack and see what that looks like. So for this demo we've got a USB-C power delivery battery pack. This one happens to support all of the voltages 5, 9, 12, 15, and 20. A standard C to C USB cable and then one of these power delivery trigger boards. So right out of the box, when you plug it in, you'll see the LED illuminate red, and you'll see five volts on the terminal. And then as you click the button, you can see it toggle through the different colors. And what that is, is this microcontroller having a conversation with your USB-C power source and negotiating the next power level. And so when you click it, you know, so when you first plug it in, it's red and you'll see five volts. Click it, you'll see yellow, and that's 9 volts. Click it again, you'll see green, and that's 12 volts. Teal is 15 volts, and then blue is 20 volts. And that's great, but the problem is 
you don't want to have to, every time that you need, you know, 15 volts for a project, plug this in and then have to click it a certain number of times to get to your teal and hope that you don't bump the button again, right? Because if you had this plugged into something that only needed 9 volts and you accidentally bumped the button and it went to 12 or 15 or 20, um, bad things would happen to your project, possibly. And so... This is the, the simple, the, you know, the, the, the red mode where when you first plug it in, the LED is red, is the simplest, you know, just let me toggle through them and play around with the source. But it turns out that you can actually program this control board into other modes. And so if you hold down the user button while plugging in the power to it, you'll see it... Um, you know, the, the RGB LED will sit there and blink until you release it. And you can then toggle through all of the different modes. And so, you know, the red mode as it comes is the let, you know, pl when I plug it in, let me toggle through all the different modes. And then if you wanted to change it to a different mode, you can select yellow, which means always give me nine volts. And if we wanted to save that, you then just long press the user button until the light goes out. So now, if I unplug it and plug it back in, you'll notice that it immediately goes to nine volts and the user button doesn't do anything. And so I've, I've now coded, you know, programmed this board to say, whenever I plug you into a USB power delivery port, just always give me nine volts. So again, if we wanna change it, we can hold the button down and we plug it in you'll see the RGB LED sit there in rainbow. And then we can toggle up to green, which again is a fixed 12 volts. Teal, which is a fixed 15 volts. Blue, which is a fixed 20 volts. So if I always wanted 20 volts, again, I can just hold the button down again. The light goes out, at which point it's saved. And every time that I plug this in, it'll negotiate up to 20 volts, right? And so you'll you notice there that it started blue, which shows you what modes it's in. It went dropped down to red, which meant that it's currently getting five volts, and then it negotiated up to 20 and flipped to it. But there's also two other modes. So after blue, if you click the button again, there's a purple mode. And what the purple mode is, if you save that, the purple mode says negotiate the highest voltage possible. And so since this battery pack supports 20 volts, when I plug it in in purple mode, you'll notice that it first went up to 12 and then went up to 20. And so this managed to negotiate 20 volts off of this battery pack. But as a good demo, here's a, one of my cell phone chargers, which doesn't support all of the USB-C voltages. It only happens to support five and nine, which of course is one of these things that you have to sit here and read all the fine print on each of your USB-C devices to figure out what they support. But since I now have this PD trigger board in, you know, negotiate the highest voltage possible mode, I can plug it into this. And since this charger only supports five and nine volts, you'll notice that when we power it, you know, when we plug it in, it's the LED starts purple and then goes to yellow. And you'll see nine volts on this. So where this would be useful for is if like you had some if you didn't really care what voltage you wanted and you just wanted the highest one for example if this was going into a switch mode you know like you have like a dc dc buck converter that took this down to like 3.3 volts if you had some like esp project you don't really care what voltage you get like the highest one will be you know great because you have the lowest current or whatever um, or if you wanted to drain some battery pack and so you just wanted the highest voltage possible and you hook this up to a resistor, um, that's what the purple mode is for. So that's great. Then if we put it back in program mode again, after purple, there's a white mode. And what the white mode does is it has the controller just cycle through all of the options. Um, and so you'll notice that on this cell phone charger, which only supports five and nine volts, every few seconds it switches between red and yellow, which, and on the output bus here, it's actually going five volts, nine volts, five volts, nine volts, right? But if we plug this back into my full voltage range battery pack, you can see it goes red, yellow, green, teal, 
blue, back to red, and it'll just sit there and cycle through all of these voltage options. Um, I can imagine this being pretty handy if you've got some USB-C device and you want to find out what voltages it supports, you can just plug this into it and then watch the LED and it'll sit there and scan through them. Um, I can't really think of any actual electrical reason that it's useful, um, but that, that it, there it is. So, um, and one interesting thing to note, all right, so red is your, you know, toggle, let me, let me toggle through them at will. But let's say I want to program this for 15 volts. And so I put it in a teal mode, pressed the button, held it, programmed it. So now if I plug this into this, it starts teal, you know, it, it, it blinks teal at the very beginning to show you what mode it's in. Then it goes to red, which means I've got five volts and then it negotiates up to 15. So we've got 15 volts, that's great. The problem is, of course, if you go to an, another USB-C source, which in this case doesn't support 15 volts, plug it in, and at the very first moment, it shows teal to show that it's in teal mode, and then it goes to red, which means you know it's started with five volts, but since this doesn't support 15 volts, this doesn't negotiate up to 15 volts, and we stay at five volts, right? So that's, that's the kind of the downside to the USB-C in a whole, in that each individual connector is maybe going to support some subset of the spec, um, but how this board in specific handles that is that it just doesn't successfully negotiate up to the higher voltage. So um, it still remembers what mode it's in, because if we then plug into a useful, you know, into a USB-C pack that port that does support the 15 volts, it negotiates it up, right? And so um, that's great. To show you what I am excited to use these ports for. Um, I've always, I've loved using these USB battery packs for five volt projects, right? If I want to like make a Raspberry Pi battery powered, it's super easy to just take a battery pack, plug the Pi into it and you're done. Um, USB-C and these trigger boards enable us to now do that same thing of USB battery pack, plug it into whatever project, but at every other voltage except for five volts. So I, for example, have taken one of these power delivery trigger boards and soldered it onto the real standard 2.1 by 5.5 millimeter barrel jack. And so if you were to take some piece of consumer electronics, like a classic Wi-Fi router, which happens to have a 2.1 by 5.5 millimeter barrel jack, but this needs 12 volts, I've got this trigger USB PD trigger board programmed in green mode, which means that it negotiates 12 volts. And so I can now take a USB-C battery pack, plug this trigger board into whatever device I need to power it, you know, 12 volts, plug it in, it negotiates 12 volts from the battery pack, and my router has actually started now turning on. And so I see a lot of real useful, you know, I, I see, I can see this trigger board being really useful for these places where I need, you know, I want to get some other squirrely voltage out of one of these battery packs so I can hard code this to 12 or nine or 15 or 20 volts, save it into that mode. And so, you know, remember the, the, the user button doesn't do anything. Um, and it always just tries to negotiate 12 volts and if it fails, it fails back to five volts. And so I can now, in the field, you know, or on the go, power this device off of my USB battery pack. So I hadn't, I, I think this is really neat. I hadn't seen any good explanations of how to use these online, as all the instructions I've seen on sellers were uh, a little bit lost in translation. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I'll have a link to these on Amazon in the doobly-doo below. Um, obviously, you can get them cheaper on other places like AliExpress and eBay, um, but I know that some people don't like to buy stuff from there. Um, so again, this has been Kenneth. Thanks for watching, and let me know if you do anything new, neat with these uh, power delivery trigger boards.